CGIAR research program on rice, Erie former head of social sciences division, Sam Mohenty, former global lead, flagship project one. Accelerating impact and equity. What is the global vision of this flagship and how is it going to benefit both Asia and Africa rice sectors? The overall objective of rice flagship one in the CRP is kind of overarching. Uh, it's enablers. It, it, it accelerates the impact and uh, accelerates the gender equity there. So our job primarily is look at uh, farm level technology needs uh, and uh, what, is, what are the constraints for technology adoptions and feedback those into the product development and dissemination there. So, the, so we provide a valuable feedback into the product verifications, evaluation on the ground. Uh, then our, our next goal is to look at uh, where this particular technology fits. Uh, so a lot of GIS, remote sensing, satellite based, uh, we, we, uh, we make sure that our technology reaches the right domain, uh, right uh, target areas there. But many of the technology developed by RICE CRP, both ERI at Africa RICE, uh, it's very trade specific. It's not mega, uh, you know, mega varieties. So it's very important that the technology targeting is done properly. Okay. So we combine a lot of different layers, biophysical, socioeconomic layer. So we can try to, up, try to target either a women's group, uh, socially unprivileged uh, group. So there is a lot of very specific precision targeting we can do uh, using technology right now. So once it's targeted, our next go job is to track the progress of the particular technology. Then we, we look at the performance of the technology at the farmer's field and provide feedback into the product development team saying that, okay, this is the issue with the, with the product, we need to revise that or modify that there, you know. So the, then in the meantime, we track progress uh, towards our, uh, our activity and its uh, contribution to the SLOs, you know, system level outcome. What is the rice CRP's contribution to reducing poverty? What is rice CRP contribution to reducing or improving uh, food security, gender equity? So we, we make sure that we track our contributions to the SLOs on an annual basis there. Uh, we also do in the end a uh, lot of documenting the impact of our work uh, at, the, at the ground level, um, gender desegregated, male versus women, um, female. Uh, so so in the overall we are very overarching. Uh, our activities are global in the sense we do a um, lot of activity done in Asia, replicated in Africa, uh, both methodologies, uh, techniques, tools. Are, are used across the regions in the in the in the in the consistent manner, and uh, and uh, and a lot of the training also done in a joint manner. We do quite a bit of capacity building of national partners uh, in terms of their capacity to do evidence-based policy decision making, which is very important at the both in Africa and Asia. There, then we 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 do a lot of capacity building in terms of uh, developing young uh, women scientists, women uh, uh, gender specialists there. So we have a significant role in terms of capacity building of the national system there, apart from all the uh, all the things we do. So overall, this uh, this this CRP, this uh, particular flag, is very critical for the success of overall rice CRP there. Uh, without that, it's very difficult to track progress, uh, evaluate of the technologies, and document impact. So it's kind of overarching and cross-cutting in nature. Who were all the partners involved in it? I think uh, the capacity of each of the centers are very different. The focuses are different. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that a lot of learning take place, uh, you know, between IRI Africa Rice, IRI CIAT, Africa Rice CIAT there. And IRI, we have been using more modern to technology in terms, of, uh, in terms of adoption. We do survey, farmers give a response, but we also collect sam seed samples to do the DNA fingerprinting to match farmers' response. Now we are going to do that in Africa. So we are introducing that particular technology with our Africa Rice colleague and, and Siat and IRI contributing to Africa Rice uh, you know, uh, tools and, and, and technology in terms of adoption there. Similar way, Africa Rice is teaching us how to do MIS system, how to track uh, you know, progress of the technology uh, developing MIS system. They are way ahead in terms of the uh, their MIS system. So we are learning from them in terms of uh, how to do it at ERI and at SEAT there. So a lot of cross center learning taking place, partly become primarily because of the CRP, which used to be very separate and they used to do their own things. Now there's a very uh, cross uh, regional uh, knowledge sharing happening uh, primarily because of CRP. What policy options are expected to be delivered at the end of the program? Uh, 
for us, it's very important we give donors the value for the money. Uh, they're investing it and they really need to know what is their money doing on the ground, how it's changing uh, farmers' life, poor people's life, uh, slump, urban slums, uh, people living condition there. And we provide that critical evidence-based uh, numbers to them, to donors providing the, uh, the, the, the value for their money. For the policy makers, it's very important because a lot of the policy decisions made uh, because of a lot of other constraints they have. Our job is not to or be a policy advocacy. We provide uh, evidence-based you know, recommendation. Uh, at least policy makers have the option. They can look at it, okay, this is the way uh, this policy would impact rather than getting influenced by the different lobby group there. Uh, so although we don't try to influence policy, but we just provide our uh, scientific output to the policy makers so they have, uh, they have that option of looking uh, the impact of the policy on the, based on evidence there. Is this rice flagship building on the success of the Global Rice Science Partnership? I think it's a lot building on the success, but also a lot of learning took place in the last uh, six years, I would say, five, six years. Uh, initially, it was, uh, it was the, the lot of learning, a lot of hiccups, uh, the three different institutes, three different setups, three different policies, three different management style. Uh, so it was, there was some time for the, it took some time for the staff to adjust. That we work for the institute, but our bigger goal is the you know making uh, impact at the ground level there. Uh, so that the institution possessiveness is much less now than than what we used to have before. Uh, so a lot of people now say we work for ICRT. They may not say I work for ED Africa Rice Society. But I think that's a big change in the people mentality now. You know the way we we approach things there. Uh, and in the second way, a lot of uh, knowledge sharing didn't take two place uh, because people were possessive in the first phase. There was a, there was a thinking that uh, institute for here to stay, uh, CRPs comes and go. So should we invest a lot on the CRP? But that, that thing also changing. The thing is CRP is here to stay for a longer time. Uh, so we have, we have bought into the CRP you know, concept or, or terminology there. And that's a big change. I think it's not the not the way we work. The not the way we share the information uh, is very different now than what it used to be. Grease to rice there. What are the big indicators for this flagship? Our flagship is primarily enabler. Uh, although we may not change directly farmers' life, uh, but we enable a lot of things happen on the ground through other flagships. That's one thing. So so the, this flagship, although does not influence farmers directly but or, or the stakeholders but we do we make accelerate uh, the impact of other flagship but apart from the playing the enabling role i think we have we play a significant role in terms of as i said policy market linkages market functioning a lot of information gener we generate helps uh, the market in terms of the functioning you know uh, you know if there is a crisis our information on supply demand trade could be very useful for the policy makers in terms of not making a hasty decision in terms of closing the border uh, putting a tariff uh, you know you go back to 2008 so this information very clear very important for the policy makers uh, traders uh, you know uh, for, you know other but other stakeholders in the market uh, we we calm the market with right information there the other things we are we are venturing into right now uh, having uh, playing a major role in the crop insurance which has not been the case in the past. This is a very new product being introduced in Asia. Uh, so we are playing a role in terms of providing more satellite-based information, real-time, unbiased, transparent, inf transparent information to the insurance companies so that the payouts from the insurance reaches farmers uh, very quickly. Before it used to take a year for farmers to get any sort of payout. So in that way, we are, we are changing people's life directly in a small way possible. But the major role is as an enabler for the other flagships, other things to, to do well on the ground. Will this flagship work with the other flagships to address climate change? Yes, we do a lot of climate change impact in terms of looking at uh, uh, future supply demand, you know, under different scenarios, different climatic scenario. And that helps us in the priority setting uh, in, our, in, our, in our CLP level, institute level, where the investment is needed the most, where, the, where you get the most value for the money. So that way, the, our work on, on, on climate longer term supply demand scenario helps in the priority setting of the institute level or the CRP level there. For more information, visit www.africarice.org.